of the City of Brownsville, Texas, pursuant to Chapter 551, Title V of the Texas Government Code, the Texas Open Meetings Act, notice is hereby given to the City Commission of the City of Brownsville, Texas, in accordance with Article 5, Section 12 of the Charter of said city, will convene an executive session and a regular session on Tuesday, September 16, 2014, at 5.30 p.m. and 6 p.m. in the Commission Chambers on the second floor of Brownsville City Hall, located at 1001 East Elizabeth Street, Brownsville, Cameron County, Texas. Executive Session Item A, Attorney Consultation Pursuant to Section 551.071 of the Texas Government Code to receive legal advice and counsel in connection with the City's rights, duties, privileges, and obligations related to the requested approval of a collective bargaining labor agreement between the City and the duly recognized bargaining agent for the City's law enforcement personnel, the Brownsville Police Officers Association. Executive Session Item B, Consultation with Attorney per section to, Pursuant to Section 551.071 of the Texas Government Code regarding pending litigation. Mayor, I'd like to move second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion. <clears throat> Okay, Stella. Uh, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and the invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas state, one state under God, indivisible. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for the, the many blessings you've given us. Help us to recognize them and not be upset so much about the things we don't have. Lord, we thank you for the rain that we were blessed with recently. And Lord, for those that had too much water, we ask you to bless them and help them to get through it. Uh, lead and guide our mayor and commissioners here tonight. Uh, show them your direction for the decisions they have to make. And Lord, we thank you and praise you for everything you've done. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 <clears throat> action on items discussed in executive session. Item A, consideration and action. Consideration and appropriate action of any in connection with the requested approval of a collective bargaining labor agreement between the city and the duly recognized bargaining agent for the city's law enforcement personnel, the Brownsville Police Officers Association. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to approve a collective bargaining agreement as proposed and ratified by the BPOA. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries, thank you very much. Executive session, item B, action to proceed as advised by legal counsel. Motion to proceed as advised by legal counsel. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Mayor's report. I have none, thank you. Commissioners. Mayor, just real quick, uh, like I stated last night, if anybody has any concerns or any issues with any standing water, of course, if it keeps on raining, uh, the, tr the crews will not be out. We need to let the rain pass at least for three to four days before the crews go out to spray for mosquitoes. But if there's any concerns, please uh, call 546-HELP so that we can get you on the list. There's a 24-hour return wait so that we can get it done for you. But please, if it, if it stops raining, please give us at least three to four days so that we can begin with spring. Thank you. Thank you. Proclamations. Proclamations, Public Power Month for PB. John. <coughs> yes. Uh, we don't have any Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
Why don't you all come up here? Stand in the middle over there with the government. Stand in front of the mayor facing the camera. Why don't you all stand? Yeah, that's fine. I know, we go to line. Okay. Thank you, uh, thank you two for joining us tonight. Uh, and also thank you for, uh, for having your crews out and, and giving us reliable service throughout the storm. Uh, a lot of our, our customers did maintain their, their services, so thank you for that. Okay, a proclamation of the City Commission of Brownsville, Texas, recognizing October 2014 as Public Power Month. Whereas we, the citizens of Brownsville, Texas, place high value and pride of ownership on local control over our utility services and therefore as citizen owners of our electric, water, and wastewater utilities have a choice in utility operations and policies. Whereas <coughs> the Brownsville Public Utilities Board provides our homes, businesses, universities, place of worship, social service, and local government agencies with reliable, efficient, and cost-effective electricity, water, and wastewater services employing sound business practices designing, designed to provide excep exceptional services at reasonable rates. And whereas the Brownsville Public Ut Utilities Board is a valuable community asset that contributes to the well-being of local citizens by providing reliable infrastructure, competitive rates, energy efficiency, environmental stewardship, a basis for solid economic development and safety awareness. And whereas the Brown, Brownsville Public Utilities Board is a dependable and trustworthy institution whose local operation provides many consumer protections and continues to, continues to make our community a better place to live and work and cherishing community and tradition while building for Brownsville's future. And whereas the Brownsville Public Utilities Board as a municipally owned utility will continue to work to bring safe and reliable public power to Brownsville homes and businesses by establishing the electric system in 1907 and creating the BPUB in 1960 under the leadership of indi individuals like Mr. Ruben Edelstein, the first chairman of the BPUB Board of Directors, Brownsville recognizes and affirms the benefits of municipal public power. And now therefore we the members of the City Commission of the City of Brownsville, Texas, by virtue of, of the authority vested by the charter of said city, do hereby Resolved that the month of October 2014 be designated Public Power Month to recognize the Brownsville Public Utilities Board for its contributions to the community and to educate consumer owners, policymakers, and others about public power. Be it further resolved that our community joins hands with more than 2,000 other public power systems in the United States in celebrating in celebration of public power to benefit customers, businesses, the community, and the nation. Done on the 16th day of September, 2014, signed Antonio, Mayor, Antonio, Antonio Martinez, Mayor, and the City Commission. Thank you. Thank you. You want to say a few words? We have to just go up there. Mayor, City Commissioners, I thank you for having us here tonight. I just wanted to go over just a quick, just a quick uh, information for you so that you will, and citizens, I hope, will understand how we should be very proud of Brownsville Utilities. Um, it's, when we say Brownsville Public Utilities, we, we're not just talking about a group of individuals who work in a building. We're talking about the whole community, all our utilities. Um, over the years, that may not have meant or to people a lot to people, but I want you to understand that the history behind the utilities makes Brownsville very special. Back in 1907, um, the city decided that they needed a electrical system. They could have gone with private companies at that time. They chose not to. The citizens of Brownsville are fiercely independent and they're very independent-minded, and they wanted to have control over their own utilities. Back in 1960, as well, we were tried, <coughs> CPNL tried to buy us out. The citizens of Brownsville, again, stood up 
and said, no, we want control over our utilities. That says, again, that says something about Brownsville. It's, it's something that Brownsville should be proud of. Um, people like the late Reuben Edelstein, we want to mention his name again because he was one of our pioneers um, for our system and our city. And he brought many great things. A lot of forward thinking individuals here in the city of Brownsville have made our organization what it is today. And what is it today? Um, in 2014, this year, um, because Brownsville Public Utilities Board's commitment to competitive rates, proficiency and reliability, safety, workforce development, and system improvement, we were ind independently verified for an RP3 designation. What does that mean? It means from across the whole United States, our Brownsville Public Utilities Board is one of only a handful of utilities, of over 2,000 utilities in the, in the United States to get this designation. It means that we've met the criteria within each of the four RP3 areas that are based on sound business practices and recognized industry leading practices. That's something our city can be proud of. Thank you. Well, thank you. And be sure and give our thanks on behalf of the commission and our office uh, to all the PUB employees because uh, they're doing a great job. <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. And Estelle, I'm going to take a point of order here. Sure. No, this is because she was speaking about the people of Brownsville and how they've stood up. Um, I just wanted to make a brief. I just came from the Brownsville Economic Development uh, Corporation meeting. And this coming Monday on September the 22nd, we will have an event uh, that will be in thanks for all the people of Brownsville uh, for all the efforts that they did um, to bring SpaceX to Brownsville. It is because of all the wonderful work that everyone did out there and all the wonderful meetings that we had. We had two great meetings about the environmental assessment uh, impact and we had over 500 people each time. So we want to tell the, the people of Brownsville thank you um, for helping us get SpaceX. Um, this event will be at the Sports, Pal I mean sports uh, Park uh, between 6.30 and 8. Um, it will be free food. Uh, there will be no alcoholic beverages. It's strictly a family affair. It's the BISD, United Brownsville, PUB. Every one of the entities in the, in the Brownsville area have contributed in funds, and they're all going to have some of their talent, whether it be a dancing group or whether it be a choir. Um, and it's going to be, again, a celebration for all your efforts um, for SpaceX. And uh, hope to see all of you there. Uh, they're going to be food and drink and a great tent. And like I said, the, the chief of police is back there. He's going to take some of his Hummers and you know, demonstrate what to do. The PUB is going to bring out some of its trucks out there. Hopefully our weather uh, holds out. And uh, look forward to seeing you there. Item number four. Item. Ditto. Number item number four, consent agenda items A through D. Approved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item, item number five. five. Consideration and action to appoint four members to the Municipal Housing Finance Corporation of Brownsville. Good evening, Mayor Commissioners. On August 20th of last year, the City Commission approved Resolution 2013-046, which um, the City committed to a firm conditional UGLG loan without recourse to Texas Cameron Apartments for construction of Mallorca Villas in the Brownsville Country Club. At the time, home funds were not yet available to, to contribute to the project. As per item number four of that resolution, the City anticipated the loan be made by and through the City's HFC. But the city learned that the BH, the Brownsville Housing Finance Corporation was dormant and the name had been taken by the Brownsville Housing Authority. Therefore, the city has proposed to reinstate the corporation, taking the name of Brownsville Municipal Housing Corporation. As per the Articles of Incorporation, the city commission is to appoint four members who are residents of the city of Brownsville. It is the city staff's recommendation to appoint the four following members. Art Rodriguez, Larry Brown, Mike Warrix, and Lupe Granado. Doing so would allow the city to establish bylaws and more importantly close on the loan for the development. Should the city choose to appoint members who are not city employees, they may do so in, in the future. Um, as mentioned, it is strongly recommended that city staff be appointed initially so that we can establish the corporation. 
I'm here to request your approval. Motion to approve. Second. Thank you. Motion on the floor. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Item six, public hearing and action on first reading of ordinance number 235-2014-034 to rezone from dwelling retail X classification to dwelling retail G classification for lot six and seven of block one of Star Acres and south half of lot eight, block 13 of M. Samano partition located near Paredes Line Road and the Net Road. Good evening, Mayor, City Commissioners. As you can see on the map projected on the screen, this area is a area for the uh, rezoning. This is on Paredes Line, uh, north of F, uh, Alton Glor. This is uh, mainly changing the uh, setbacks of, this, of the uh, property. Um, the Planning Senate Commission is all in favor of the uh, reclassification. Any questions, Mr. Chair? Have a motion? Public hearing. Oh, public Post. hearing, I'm sorry. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Item seven, public comment. Action item number eight. Item eight, consideration in action to award the specific <laughs> and aggregate stop loss medical insurance coverage a contract to an insurance carrier. Honorable Mayor, members of the City Commission, uh, this is, uh, item is to acquire individual specific and aggregate stop loss for our health insurance coverage for the plan year beginning October 1st, 2014. Uh, the city's uh, uh, health insurance plan is self-funded. Uh, since the city's health insurance is self-funded, the city purchases stop loss to protect itself from large or high claims. The city of Brownsville is in full compliance 
currently with the Affordable Health Care Act. A legal notice for request for proposals for both the individual specific and the aggregate stop laws was placed in the Brownsville Herald on July 25th and 30th, and the notice was placed on the city's webpage as well. TML IEBP assisted us in, in this process. Uh, the deadline for submitting the proposals was 2 p.m. on August the 13th. Seven quotes were received from three different companies, American National, American Fidelity, and Fidelity Security. Out of the seven quotes, quote one from American Fidelity was the best and most advantageous to the city. It's a 12-15 stop loss contract that includes medical and RX coverage. Based on the uh, quote one proposal, we are recommended that the stop loss insurance con contract for the individual specific and aggregate stop loss coverage be awarded to American Fidelity, which includes a, a $200,000 $200, individual <coughs> specific stop loss deductible and 150,000 aggregate deductible for an annual premium of 728,833. Quote one also includes an ag annual aggregate attachment point of 13629466 America, American Fidelity's annual loss insurance premium of 728,833 is $11,800 less, or approximately 1.59, less than the, than the current year, or fiscal year 74, uh, 2014, uh, by, uh, by $11,844. Uh, quote one from American Fidelity also in includes five lasers with five different amounts, 450,000, 400,000, 350,000, 325,000, and 300,000. The 450,000 and the 350,000 lasers include possible transplants. The 400,000 and the 300,000, 325,000 lasers exclude transplants. The transplant for the 300,000 laser was just recently removed, so we now have uh, two with possible uh, transplants. Uh, TML estimates that the lasers, including quote one, will not reach those levels in the next coming year. So in that sense, we feel very comfortable about that. Uh, the lasers include three dependents and two city employees. The 450,000 and the 325,000 lasers are for two employees. The 400, the 350 and 300,000 lasers are for three dependents. Uh, the premium covers uh, the no lifetime limit on medical costs as, as a result of the new Affordable Health Care Act. Uh, we've been with uh, TML since 2004, and these are some of the uh, uh, information that I would like to show you. Going back to 2004, uh, the city had uh, refunds on stop losses equaling to 601000 to 71. Our insurance premium that year was 498788 so in 2004, the city took a gain of 100,002,483. Follow the following year in 05, we had a gain again of 886,253. Uh, we saw a net cost on our on our on our stop loss in 06 by 197,368, meaning that there, that we received less refunds than our premiums. And so far, 2007, we had a a gain of 243,262, uh, not so in 2008, 568, uh, 09, not so, 427, 332, and 2010, 543, 145. In a sense, the stop loss is to avoid any major catastrophes, and it's really a risk that we, that the city takes. Uh, in 11, uh, the net cost was 452,335. In 2012, we had a gain of 232,158, and in 2013, an unbelievable amount of $733,912. In other words, that during that year, we received stop uh, loss refunds of 1,307,703, and our premiums were only 573,791. Um, the uh, 2013 financials uh, show that uh, the city um, uh, claims were a little over a million dollars, 11, 11 million dollars, and uh, we had a, an ending fund balance of 684,284. Again, on the self-funded fund, any money that we don't spend on claims, we retain. 
And that's the good part about being self-funded. In, uh, in 20, in, this is just for the period, for 11 months of the fiscal year, uh, we show a fund balance right now of 997,485. We are now recommended with this, uh, with this item for us, for you to approve the, uh, the stop loss uh, to American Fidelity. Do I hear a motion? Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Good work, Pete. Thank you. Item number nine, consideration and action on resolution number 2014-055 to reestablish the traditional cultural, social, e economic, and familial ties between the city of Brownsville, Texas, and the city of Iroica, Matamoros, Tamaulipas, Mexico, by establishing a sister city agreement. Mayor, members of the commission, what we want to do here is pass a, a joint resolution, Matamoros and Brownsville, as a sister city. I got Mr. Ronaldo de la Torre, who represents uh, the Matamoros government, with us. Uh, they're, 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 uh, Resolution will be sent to their Secretary of Foreign Affairs, ours to the United States Department of State Foreign uh, Secretary's Office uh, for the purpose of documenting and archiving uh, our sister city agreement. In the past, we have both passed independent uh, agreements. However, it's never been done in a joint venture where both heads of our government, our mayors from both cities, will sign and have this properly documented in, in our respective archives. Uh, in English and Spanish, where we will receive copies for uh, filing in our secretary's office, and, and of course, they are uh, archived in our federal governments. We request to approve this. Do I hear a motion? Approved. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank Charlie, you. the only thing is make sure, I think ever since I've come on board, you know, there's always been, we've always had this, but we've never really <laughs> have it archived and registered the, in the proper way. Right. I'm glad you guys are doing it. But somehow or another, make sure this stands out somewhere where the city secretary, you know, post it with all the, you know, all the appropriate uh, that'll filings. Be, that'll, and filings. Okay. that'll be done after we send them off for approval sure. in both their languages. Yeah. It comes back for your signature. Uh, we send it back to them, and then we get it, yeah. and then it's all Display it prominently so yes. people know it now from here on out. Okay, thank you very much. Gracias por haber venido, eh? Number 10. Item number 10, consideration and action to authorize the city manager to execute a, execute a service agreement between the city of Brownsville and the, and the Brownsville Community Improvement Corporation for fiscal year 2015. Uh, Mayor and members of the city commission, this is the service agreement between the city of Brownsville and uh, the BCIC. Uh, BCIC pays the city $25,000 uh, uh, per year in equal monthly installments in exchange for services that the city provides. Uh, and I'd ask that you approve. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Item 11, consideration and action to authorize the city manager to execute the Brownsville Sports Park Maintenance Agreement with the Brownsville Community Improvement Corporation for fiscal year 2015. Uh, Mayor and uh, honorable members of the city commission, uh, this is the uh, Brownsville Sports Park Maintenance Agreement contract. Uh, under this agreement, uh, the BCIC pays to the city of $550,000.12 equal monthly installments of $45,833.33 a month. Um, it's a yearly agreement, and I'd ask that the City Commission approve it. Approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? <coughs> Motion carries. Item 12, consideration and action to authorize and execute an interlocal agreement between the City of Brownsville, Texas, and the Cameron County District Attorney's Office for the acceptance of a, a supplemental grant from Southwest Border Anti-Money Laundering Alliance for the Financial Asset Seizure Team by Chief Orlando Rodriguez. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. The, uh, the alliance under which we work wants to give us more money. And so to supplement our current grant to pay for a prosecutor and for equipment at the police department in, in the amount of $199,435.94, um, which would go into our, our current grant, we ask that you approve this. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Item 13, consideration and action to award a term contract for transit management services for B Metro. I don't know, Mayor, members of the City Commission, this is uh, to look, go over the uh, proposal that was submitted for 
Transit Management Services for B Metro. Uh, a legal notice for request for proposals for uh, the uh, services was placed twice in the Brownsville Herald on the 13th and 20th of April. Uh, the RFP was also posted on the city's purchasing website and the Texas bid system website. 29 companies received an invitation to participate. 15 companies downloaded the RFP package on the uh, Texas bid system website. Two pre-proposed proposal meetings were conducted on the 16th and April the 23rd at the purchasing department conference room with only one firm attending. Only two proposals were received by the purchasing department. One was from the First Transit Inc. and the other one from LTR Management Services. The evaluation committee that was assigned to review the proposals consisted of Airport Director Larry Brown, Human Resources Director Oscar Salinas, Safety and Risk Coordinator uh, or assist and Assistant uh, HR Director Fernando Arellano, Administrative Auditor Arnold Pettis. Also in attendance in the evaluation meeting was uh, purchasing director or manager Roberto Luna. The evaluation committee met on several occasions on June the 19th, June 20th, July 16th, August 6th, 11th of August, and August the 21st to analyze and evaluate the proposals. Scheduled interviews were conducted by the evaluation committee with First Transit and LTR on September 3rd and September 4th. The evaluation committee met again on September the 5th and 9th to evaluate the re interviews. On September 9th, the evaluation committee graded the interviews and assigned the highest ranking to First Transit. First Transit's personnel assigned to be Metro have throughout the years given us excellent service. Ms. Norma Zamora, our director, First Transit Director assigned to manage B Metro has considerable experience in operating a transit system such as ours. Ms. Zamora, a current board member of the Texas Transit Association, has served in its legislative committee that serves small urban systems statewide. In this association, she has served as president for two terms. In addition, Ms. Zamora has also served as vice president, representing small urban systems on various occasions over the last 14 years. Ms. Zamora worked closely with the Texas Transit Association, the 100 Bus Coalition, which was formed temporarily to serve as an advocacy group, and the Board of Transit Agencies to change, and this is something that we were looking for for many years, to change the law language of the Federal Transportation Bill, which stated that any transit agency exceeding 200,000 population threshold in the urbanized area could not use federal dollars for operating. And we started talking about this, if I remember correctly, way back in 20s, uh, 2008, 2007. These three organizations were successful in changing the language in the transportation bill to allow transit agencies with less than 100 buses to continue to use federal dollars for operating. The city of Brownsville exceeded the 200,000 urbanized population in the 2010 census. As a, as a result, uh, B -Metro, since B Metro operates with less than 100 bu buses, it has been able to continue to receive over $2 million per year for operations. In addition, Ms. Zamora currently serves as the Vice Chair on the LRGV, Regional <coughs> Transportation Advisory Panel, a committee mandated by TaxDA to address regional coordination with the transit provider, both public, private, workforce solutions, human health services agencies, and the MPLs. On September 10th and the, 11th, and the 12th, the contract, contract and negotiating com committee consisting of Oscar Salinas, Lupe Granado, Arvin Tucker, and I, and Roberto Luna had a conference call with First Transit Representative Rick Donning to negotiate the, bus, the best and final offer. The first year negotiated price was reduced because of these negotiations from 209892 to 273000 713, or a reduction of 17,179. The current annual contract with First Transit that expires on September 30th is for 283,800. So we did manage to lower the cost from 2014. 
It was also agreed that any member, and this is important, of the first transit management team can be replaced during the term of the contract. First transit will reduce, also will reduce the fee to the extent that the compensation for the individual filing the position will be less than the previous manager. The city of Brownsville may, in its own discretion, change the makeup and the compensation of the management team within 60 days notice, and First Transit has agreed to this. Uh, First Transit will provide a revised pricing schedule with the changes required by the city of Brownsville. The professional fees through the negotiations also uh, for, uh, at the beginning for between two, the year two, two and five, will now only increase by 1.5% each year instead of the 2% that was stated in the original proposal. Uh, should the contract be extended to the full term of 10 years, contract years 6 through 10 will only increase 2% each year instead of the 2.5% as stated on the original proposal. The contract with First Transit Inc. is subject to reform review as to its legality by our legal department. This is the uh, this, this spreadsheet shows the initial proposed pricing. If you look on year one, which begins <coughs> October 1st of this year, 290, 892, it was revised to 273, 713. And, and we also changed the uh, percentage increases each year, so that resulted in additional savings. Um, the committee that reviewed this proposals studied very carefully, they had many, many meetings uh, among themselves to make sure that what they were recommending was gonna be the best offer for the city or best contract for the city. Um, the, uh, the bus operates for about $5 million, that's how much they operate. Because of, again, because of the terminal that was recently constructed, we are now generating about 400, over $400,000 in lease revenues. By generating, this additional lease revenues, the general fund transfer is less. We used to pay over a million dollars from general fund each year just to support transit. The, no the numbers that were shown to you in the budget for the coming years are on 700,000. For 2014, it's very likely that the number will be less than what's budgeted, which would be about maybe four or $500,000. So if you look at it, if you look at an operation of five million two and the general fund is only paying, let's say, $600,000, $500,000. I think it's a good deal. We also, uh, Ms. Amora and, and uh, Fresh Transit, continue effortlessly every year to, us, to make sure that we get funding not only from the federal government, but as much money from the state government. And to this, obviously, this, this has assisted us. Now, we're going to be opening up shortly a, uh, the parking lot, uh, and hopefully that will generate additional revenues for the city. Um, again, the committee reviewed this very carefully. Uh, there was an evaluation committee that was formed. Uh, we, we tried to negotiate as much as we could. We did lower the cost by a little, not much, but we did. And we also decreased the increases each year. So we felt that we have a, a, a good coming, going forward contract. So you feel that at this point you fully negotiated the contract? We did, yes, sir. Have you had a chance to review it? Yes. You did? Okay. Uh, I looked at my package for a copy of the contract, and there wasn't. So I requested it from your staff. Yeah. What happened? What happened, uh, Commissioner? During this particular period, we were negotiating, and we were making changes. We were making changes. So by Friday, we had, did not have the information ready. As, as a matter of fact, we didn't get the information, some of the information, until last night. I stayed here until 8 o'clock, Mr. Luna and I stayed here until 8 o'clock after your meeting, trying to negotiate, trying to get some more information from them because we knew that we had not sent this to you in the packet uh, because this was coming in through negotiation. So this took us, this took us a while. And, uh, but we feel comfortable based on the committee members, the original committee members that studied this proposal. I was not part of, the, of that committee uh, when it was first introduced. I was part of the negotiation committee uh, and, and, and we feel that based on what, what, we've, uh, what has occurred, that we, we do have a, a, a good contract moving forward. Again, we look at the, at the company, what has the company offered us all these years? And believe me, if we had not passed that, we had not changed the transportation bill, 
And it took quite a while. It took us several years. But Ms. Zamora not only <coughs> did, did work with people from Texas, she also dealt with people from nationwide because we, they were in the same boat that we were. Uh, anybody above the $200,000 urbanized population was going to lose the federal government share of the, for operations. So this has to be given as, as a, to me, as, as a high point to the system, first transit under, and again under Ms. Norma Zamora, which has, to me has done a fantastic job trying to get as, acquire as much federal money as, and state money as for us. And she continues to pursue this. So this is something that Maybe if we change, maybe they change directors. The, the, the thing about this contract is that we can make changes. We can hire our own people if they need be. If we're not satisfied with, with the contract moving forward. Let's say that they change personnel and the personnel, the, the new director that comes in is not to our liking. We have that opportunity. We have a 60 day cancellation clause that we can do this. So. That's why we feel that, to me, this is a good deal for the city. Mark, I'm sorry. When I reviewed it and I looked under the sections, under Section 27, there was a non-discrimination clause. And I had a question whether, because under the way I read it, and I'd like your interpretation on it, it says that the city will be, hit, the city will be held liable for damages in I, case. I, we can, if you want to approve it subject to final legal review, that's fine. I'd, I'd rather not discuss implications okay. of the specific clauses. Like okay, that. I have I have questions on two. Mayor, would it, would, uh, does anybody else have any other comments? No, um, <clears throat> what I'm saying, are we be, are we on any deadline or do we, we well, can, we can approve? We already asked for an extension of the commission okay. a few months ago. Yes. No. We need to move forward. With it. Okay, um, and Mark, you're saying that if we do have a motion <coughs> to approve subject we, we to- We can make a subject to final legal review, so if there's any to final concerns legal or additions, Are you okay with that? Make those. Okay, and do I hear a second? I'll second that. Mayor, okay. excuse me. Yes, Commissioner, we want to make sure that, that the city is protected, and we are going to make sure that any language that doesn't, up, affect, that will affect us later, that needs to be changed. And yeah, we're going to be working very closely with our legal department to make okay. those changes. And, and Pete, we, we trust you, okay? That's a, a motion and a second, and all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries, and, and, and Norma Samora is to be congratulated. She does a great job. <laughs> Item 14, consideration and action to extend the term contract for the activation program, promoting multimodal transportation with Black Texas for 30 days to complete negotiations and legal review of the contract. Now I put you under a lot of pressure, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. She had to be hired before she presented. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, Commission and uh, Mayor and City Commissioners. Um, we are respectfully requesting the City Commission authorization to extend the above, me the above mentioned contract uh, with Bike Texas um, due to the Brownsville MPO identifying additional funds uh, that could be utilized to enable Bike Texas to further undertake planning and coordination efforts with scope that's currently uh, under contract. Uh, we would like to, um, they would like to become partners in the current contract. So we need, due to this new partnership we need, with the MPO, we are requiring additional time for negotiating tasks, uh, identifying the new deliverables and the new payment terms prior to recommending renewing of the contract. So we're just asking for a 30-day extension. Motion to approve. Second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Norma. Thank you. Item 15, consideration and action to award a contract for Southmost Hike and Bike Trail. Good afternoon, yes. Mayor Commissioners. On August 8, 2014, the City of Brownsville received six bids for the construction of a 1.8-mile uh, hike and bike trail on Southmost. Uh, the lowest bidder for this project was Arco Construction. Their bid came in at 768,770. This project uh, was over budget and the item following this item is a negative change order to bring the project into budget. We're rec recommending approval for this contract. Your motion. Motion to approve. S second. I'll second that. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion. Anybody opposed? Motion carries. 
Item number 16. Item 16, consideration and action to award amendment number one for the Southmost Hike and Bike Trail. As I mentioned, uh, this amendment is a negative change order in the amount of $181,598.40 to bring the contract sum to $587,171.80. We're recommending approval on this uh, change order. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 17, consideration and action to award a contract for 6th Street sidewalk bike lane improvements. <coughs> On August the 12th of 2014, the City of Brownsville went out for bids for the construction of 6th Street sidewalk bike lane improvements. It, we received uh, five bids, and I know there were some concerns with the delays. I'm sure you all read the article on the paper today. Um, we uh, had one, the second lowest bidder a submitted local preference request. This did not meet the, uh, the local government code requirements. Therefore, we are recommending approval to award this contract to RM Wallstroff in the amount of $244,466.71. Okay. That's added to what was already budgeted? The, the, original, the original budget for this project was $266,000, I believe, and it came in uh, $22,000 under budget. I realize that, but the other, in other words, the one fifty from bus and then the resurfing of the street, and this is an added extra, an, an added two forty four. dollars this is the, well, the, it's, this does not include the resurfacing of the street. The resurfacing of the street is being paid for by uh, Public Works out of CIP funds. And that's about $60,000. It's a little bit over $60,000 for the resurfacing of 6th Street. Okay, and I think there were some <coughs> concerns about traffic, but everything, you know, but I think everybody, at least the people that I had contacted me they were provided with everything and they were satisfied so yes Robert had completed some uh, traffic uh, analysis right. and yet uh, one of the consultants provide a uh, recommendation right. okay does it does anybody have a motion motion to approve second second okay all those in favor say aye aye, aye. anybody opposed nay nay okay motion carries thank you item number 18 Item number 18, consideration and action to award a term contract for the purchase and delivery of motor fuels for the City of Brownsville. Honorable Mayor, members of the City Commission, staff recommends the award of the term contract uh, for the purchase and delivery of motor fuels to the City of Brownsville to Gold Star Petroleum and Spring, Texas to the lowest responsible bidder at the stipulated margin price for locations at B Metro Police Department and Public Works Yard. We also recommend uh, the, the term contract for the purchase uh, to uh, for the purchase and delivery of motor fuels to the city of Brownsville, to oil patch fuel and supply of Brownsville, low responsible bid to provide to fuel services for <coughs> fire stations three, six, seven, eight, nine, Brownsville landfill police station for super unleaded and airport uh, yard. This contract shall commence upon the award of the city commission and expire September 30, 30th, 2017. And so funding. Moved. I'm sorry. <laughs> you weren't done. I'm sorry. Sorry. Uh, uh, funding for this project will be, will, deliver, will be derived from the operating budgets of the user departments. So moved. I'll second that. Okay. Thanks, Lupin. Do I hear a second? Okay. Second. I okay. That. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Lupin. Item 19 consideration and action to award a term contract. For DOT and non DOT drug testing and pre employment services for the city of Brownsville. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. Uh, staff recommends awarding a term contract for DOT and non DOT drug testing and pre employment services for the city of Brownsville to Express Occupational of Brownsville, Texas, at the stipulated prices. This contract shall commence upon award by the said commission and shall expire on September 30th. 2017 with an option to for renewals for three additional one year renewals. Funding for this procurement is derived from each department's budget. Um, evaluation committee recommends approval. Motion to approve. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. The motion carries. Thank you. Item, Item 20. 20, consideration and action to award a contract for construction of sediment and erosion controls for the Brownsville landfill. Well, Mayor, City Commissioners, uh, tonight we are requesting your approval to award a contract to G&T Paving 
of Brownsville, Texas in the amount of $134,000.35 for the construction of, of a settlement and erosion control measures at our city landfill. Um, with the, uh, the assistance of our purchasing division, we were able to successfully and properly obtain three project bids in August of 20th, 2014. GNT uh, paving was the lowest, low responsive bidder with the next lowest bid received in the Environmental Industrial Services of Houston, Texas of $301,021.05 and the highest bid from uh, R.M. Wolstorf of Brownsville, Texas at $353,035. Public Works in conjunction with a recommendation of SES Engineering Consulting Firm feel we will, it will therefore be in the best interest of the city to proceed with this, uh, to award the and execute the specific contract to GNT Paving. Funding for this contract will derive from the landfill tipping fees account. Approved. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Adjourn. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you.